So if we look at a membrane protein from the top in a membrane, what we did in the detergent that we ripped this one out and then we just took the protein. But what I would ideally like to do is ripping out a slightly larger part, maybe include a small disc of the membrane around it. Now this is of course a pipe dream because this part would now have the edges exposed to water here. It wouldn't really work, so I can't do it that way. But I can get pretty darn close. This is a lipid nano disc. What I've done here is that, to tell the truth, I have ripped the protein out first. But then we reconstitute it not in detergent micelles, but in actual lipids. These lipids I then mix with protein here. And this protein is an amphiphatic protein, so that on the inside, both the blue and the green helices here are hydrophobic. They're gonna, they and their side chains will completely cover the lipids. I just don't show the side chains here. The outside of them, on the other hand, are hydrophilic. So this entire small disc here will be water soluble. But I can now put, with a bit of luck, retain my protein in the middle here and make sure that the protein has a completely or almost native membrane around it. So it's not going to be fully, fully, fully native in the sense that I actually have to do roughly what I did with detergent, rip this out, reconstitute it and stabilize it. But it's certainly a much more realistic environment than detergent, if we need it. So when I spoke about this a few years ago, five years ago, I had a very talented student in this class who got excited and said she wants to do this for our ligand gated iron channels. My only problem is that at the time we were not doing structural biology, but thank God that student, Urska Rovsnik, she didn't take no for an answer, so she decided to do this anyway with us. And I'll show you some of the work she did, not with nanodisks, but with pure detergent. So Urska took a bacterial protein called Glick and she overexpressed it and then reconstituted it in detergent and then she put it under a cryo microscope that we have here at SciLife Lab. And this is what a micrograph looks like once you've done all your homework. If you average and uh, average and magnify those small dots there, they're going to look roughly like this. You can probably count the five subunits here. We see the pentameric ion channel from the top and the hole we see is the actual ion pore. You're not going to be able to get a structure from only these. We also need some side views, and the side views would look roughly like these when you got them later. And here you can, I'm still in shock and awe that we can actually see atomic structure with a microscope, even if it's an electronic microscope. Some 10 years ago, we wouldn't have been able to use cryium to get that type of detail because it was just, the resolution was too low, we would get rough blobs, and then we should somehow try to fit this into blobs. But with structures of this class, Urska has been able to determine electron densities with a resolution of roughly three angstrom. And with that type of resolution, she can literally trace out the individual alpha helices in the transmembrane region, the beta sheets up here in the extracellular domain, and then examine what happens if this undergoes a change in pH, which for this particular channel corresponds to the opening. Awesome work uh, that I'm so impressed to see. And that's Thanks to Urska that we're now doing structural biology in the group.